Hello and welcome to another ONDR ModDrill video. What are these like? What do you need to consider or know about before you buy one of these Jaguar XK8 XKRs? This is video 161 in our series of XK8 videos. In this video, I'm not going to get into the details of cam chain, tensioners, rust, um, all the nitty gritty. But what I'm going to tell you is what these cars are like to live with. Um, the co running costs, um, the size, etc. Okay then, so you're interested in Jaguar XK8 or XKR, so you need to understand there are what types are available, uh, etc. Basically, the XK8 was launched in 1996, the XKR in 1998. Those are the two main um, engine derivatives. There was also uh, a coupe and a convertible, and that is basically the complete range. The coupe and convertible actually launched uh, very shortly after each other, the coupe first, but then very soon after the convertible. One thing you need to really seriously consider uh, if you are going to buy one of these things is the size of them. Um, they are huge. Um, the length of them is 4.76 meters. Um, put that in perspective, that's uh, basically the complete length of a normal sized garage. So if you've got cupboards at the back of your garage like I had, you're going to have to move them to get this baby parked in. They're not uh, particularly wide, they are two meters wide, uh, mirror to mirror. I'd say the length is the, is the biggest thing and um, the weight, it's um, 1.6 tons for the, um, the coupe and 1.7 for the convertible. So it is a big barge and you do get that with the handling. It's a uh, it's not a, a sports car to be nipping around A and B roads. Um, it's more a motorway cruiser. Interiors then. Um, the Jaguar X100 interiors are quite luxurious. To be honest, you get all this wood veneer on the dashboard, steering wheel round the, um, the gear stick. The gear, the gear knob itself is, uh, is wood. And there's a lot of leather albeit there's a lot of plastic as well but uh, as I say all the cars come with wood veneers except uh, I think some later ones had carbon fibre and there was one car with uh, one version with piano black but the bulk of the cars have this uh, walnut veneer there are a couple of other different types of wood which I'll probably cover in another video all the cars have air conditioning um, they're all obviously even the convertible is four seats I think it's more down to insurance or classification or up. I've read something about that rather than actually any practicality. In the coupe, you can actually use them for small children or people without legs, as, pe as it's famously known. Um, and entertainment wise, or uh, in, in, you do get all the cars have a radio cassette. Most cars got the CD changer in the boot, albeit all that tech is now really old um, and a lot of it broken my particular cd is broken cd player i'm actually considering upgrading the whole uh, head unit because it's had its day there is an option was on the options list just say for a premium audio which was uh, in the early days uh, manufactured by harman Kardon, uh, later alpine uh, that gave you uh, additional speakers a big subwoofer subwoofer in uh, the case of the uh, coupe on the rear parcel shelf and uh, an amplifier to support all the extra speakers. All the uh, there's a, it's electric everything a lot of the cars uh, the premium cars have uh, a, le a electric adjustable uh, memory steering and seat position all the seats are electric I'll say all the seats are leather there was an option for cloth uh, inserts or what we call half leather but that actually is quite rare. It was a, a lower cost option, but I think that's quite desirable now, <laughs> particularly if you live in warmer climates and you don't want a sweaty bum. I've got a, quite, I've got a very long body and I've still got uh, two, two inches of headroom. Um, it's, there is quite a lot of adjustment on the seat. So if you're a, a, a taller owner or a driver, you're gonna, not going to have too much trouble. But I would recommend taking one out for a test drive if, like I say, you are considering and buying one of these just to see how it fit. It is quite low to the ground. Um, getting in and out isn't a problem. Um, 
But if you were to lower the suspension, as some people do, you might find yourself dropping into the seat and struggling to get out. Uh, finally, there was an option uh, for sat-nav that was put in place of the three auxiliary dials here. Um, that again is very old hat and um, pretty much obsolete now, particularly with all the phone apps and what have you. But uh, a lot of people now are trying to retrofit the auxiliary dials. So if you have a car with sat nav, it's not particularly um, that desirable or worth any more money. Uh, before we finish with interior, I forgot um, the cars are, are quite safe. They've got uh, passenger and driver's airbags, the later model year 2001 onwards has airbags in the side, bolsters of the seat as well. Um, so yeah, quite a safe car. And uh, I think it's model year two, tw um, 2001 had the ARTS, or Active Restraint Technology System, uh, which it, it can alter the firing of the airbag based on the uh, impact, etc., impact parameters. Uh, before we finish with the interior, a couple of other things. Obviously, they're all automatic, as we said before. They all utilise the Jaguar standard J gate with the manual selector on the left-hand side of the gate there, which is particularly useful if you want to overtake and you need a bit more performance, particularly with the XK8. I don't think it's quite the same if you've got another uh, the, the extra brake horsepower of the R. Uh, and finally, the, the wing mirrors. Most of the cars have um, retractable wing, wing mirrors. That if you haven't got retractable, then you're pretty unlucky. So there you go, a very, very nice place to sit and be in, uh, the Jaguar XK8. Okay, so you're thinking of buying one of these, uh, the cars, so you want to know about performance. Um, all the cars are V8s, all the cars are petrol, um, all the cars are automatic. And that does have some sort of uh, constraints in the fuel economy you're looking for this car. It's going to be, uh, on the long run, you, you're going to see 30 possibly, if you're light with your foot. But more regularly round town, um, late teens, mid 20s, um, um, is about normal. Not the most economical car, but also not the worst. It's not, a, not really a gas guzzler. Performance wise then, this is a normally aspirated 4 litre, you're looking at 290 brake horsepower with a supercharger bolted on top, that will bring it up to 370. The later 4.2 cars are a little bit more powerful again, that will take the normally aspirated up to 300 brake horsepower and the uh, supercharged up to 400. What does that do not to 60? Well. Normally aspirated, this car will, in theory, uh, will do 6.4 seconds to 60. The supercharger will take a good second and a bit off that, down to about 5.2. But really, with a supercharger, it'll take this lazy V8 uh, and give it a real punch up the backside. Uh, you get a lot more drivability with a supercharger, obviously. It's going to strain the engine a bit more, but um, it's a big old lazy V8, to be honest. What we do have with a normally aspirated car, they aren't just um, uh, straightforward normally aspirated, they've got variable valve timing on them, so they do give a little bit more oomph. If you can actually persuade the car to go to higher revs, it will start to fly, believe me. Okay, let's, uh, we've talked a bit about performance, let's talk about uh, braking. Obviously you need some decent brakes to uh, stop a big car. Um, all the Jaguar XK8s, X100s come with um, uh, disc brakes, front and rear. Uh, they are slightly bigger on the front than the rear, obviously. Um, the wheels range from uh, 17 inch to 20 inch in standard. These are actually split rim BBS alloys. These are 18 inch, but the more common one is the uh, Detroit alloy wheel, uh, five spoke, uh, that's 20 inches. Um, there are three different disc diameters including the um, 355 uh, Brembo uh, high performance braking kit and they have a slightly different uh, shape four pot caliper. All these cars come with uh, twin exit exhaust pipes. Uh, the exhaust, exhaust system itself is uh, quite uh, complicated it's got a, a large front exhaust box and then it splits out to two mid exhaust uh, or silencers, mufflers, until you finally get a muffler 
or silencer just before the, the tail uh, pipe. So um, they're extremely quiet. I mean, these cars, you wouldn't tell. It's got an engine. It's, they're so quiet as they murmur along. But a lot of people do delete exhaust uh, back boxes, uh, the mid pipe, um, maybe release the, um, uh, the, the burble of the V8. I personally have done something like that. You can't resist it. Okay, so if you've not been put off um, at this point, uh, hopefully I haven't, what does this actually cost to, to run? Obviously I've talked a little bit about the fuel consumption. Um, it is petrol and petrol prices are going up the roof, but so take that aside. Tax and insurance. So um, to insure this vehicle, I'm, I'm, I'm a middle-aged guy in his uh, early 50s, living in Mid Wales, and I'm paying £140 a year to insure this fully comp. Obviously that's not going to be the same for everybody depending on the area and your age. Um, to actually tax these cars, this is sort of the pre-high tax uh, rate cars which I think came in uh, 2004, was it five? Anyway, this, so this to tax costs about £26 a month. I think the, the, this year's renewal was £309. So for, say, the uh, take the MOT into consideration, you're, you're looking to run this car, to put this on the road without any servicing or putting any fuel in, it's about £500 a year. So it is not a massive budget to have this thing uh, available to uh, play with. Okay, so the Jaguar XK8 X car had lots of model year changes right from the start, model year 1996, right through to the end, uh, the 2005 version. Um, most there was three actual major changes. Um, obviously, the first standard in model year 1996, which can be identified by the recessed fog lamp in the front bumper. The front bumper actually can uh, tell you a lot. Uh, the next major um, uh, model year uplift was actually in 2001 where they had um, actually improved the safety system of the car, the uh, the art system, so you got a lot of uh, more airbags, you got the separate uh, headrest in the seat and um, also you've got a flush fog lamp. Um, the next major um, facelift or the major change then was actually to go to a 4.2 litre engine that was in uh, model year 2003. There isn't any changes to the front bumper there, it still has a, re uh, sorry, a flush fog lamp. The, the way you can tell that, it's got 4.2 litre written on the engine. Uh, there are some other things, but uh, I've covered that in another video. Um, finally, the, um, there was a small change uh, at the end of production in model year 2005, and the front bumper was changed again just to refresh it. There was a styling line put in uh, around here to match the sill applique, the sill covers that had been added to try and uplift the styling. So lots of model year changes but just those three main ones until the end. Okay I mean that just about wraps up. Um, everything I think you need to know if you're considering to buy one of these lovely Jaguar XK, XKR X100s. What I would say is a wording, word of warning. Um, the price of these cars in the UK can vary between a couple of thousand to early teens, maybe 12, 15 K for really minter. There are people speculating on higher values for, I think I saw one for 30,000 uh, pounds, a Japanese uh, imported, but uh, crazy money. What I would say is that please bear in mind that when you do buy one, these can be insatiable money pits. Sorry, a bit of a reality check, but these can be complete and utter money pits. I mean, I bought this car for, I think, three and a half grand. I must have spent a similar amount on it, doing up the front and rear suspension, etc. So please go in with your eyes open. In the defense of this car, if you're willing to do uh, a bit of the work yourself, as I've done, as others do, it can be quite reasonable, to be honest. And uh, I bought the car not just to drive, but as a bit of a, a DIY hobby. And this gives you lots of scope. Uh, furthermore, there's lots of help on the internet, in the owners clubs, uh, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, obviously our channel, 
there's John D's channel and there's other fledgling channels coming up on board uh, to support the car. So basically there's a massive support network if you are getting into trouble uh, with these cars. But uh, bear in mind it is going to cost you some money. You can uh, reduce that by doing a lot of the work yourself. But uh, yeah, it's a classic car. Uh, you've got to bear in mind these aren't new cars. It's uh, This particular car is 26 years old. So you, you're looking at cars that are at least 20 years old, uh, most of them. So uh, you're going to get some problems. A bit of reality check, but there you go. Anyway, um, I hope you find the, the uh, video useful. Um, if you are looking to buy one of these things, there's loads more videos on our channels about model years. Um, and we are going to do some uh, videos um, about what to look for if you are considering buying one and driving one for the first time. So please uh, subscribe to our channel, make sure you pick up on those videos and uh, please like, comment, share and subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.